All right, so last time we talked about fetching data from database using get full client. And there are several methods like get one, which gets a certain record by its ID. And this is gonna come, gonna come in real handy when I show you next time how to update and delete um, tasks from the database. But before we get started with today's uh, tutorial, we actually need to refactor this and place it inside the libpocketbase.js file. So that in this way, we could reuse the same piece of code uh, again, anywhere in our application. So we're gonna copy this, go to this uh, pocket base JS inside the lib folder that I showed you how to create uh, earlier in the course. Next, we're gonna export an asynchronous function called get tasks. And then we're gonna return and an await and then this uh, get full list method. Back to our uh, to-do list, we're gonna get tasks and you know, call this method. And remember this actually returns a promise with an array of records. So that basically if the promise gets resolved, it uh, it uses this uh, this result and stores it inside the array. Like, as, like we mentioned earlier in the course, uh, this actually doesn't return an array of records. It actually returns a promise in which once it's uh, resolved, it returns to us this array of records. Now that's done, we can refresh the page for example, and it works just completely fine. It got our uh, record, as you can see. There's one thing I forgot, which is adding uh, logic here, like a piece of state which uh, checks for the completion of a task. So if this if this user uh, completed a task, click on this checkbox, it actually turns this uh, from a uh, false to a true completed in inside pocket base. But we're not going to get into that right now. We just want to create our task. And then next time we can do that once we learn how to delete and how to edit and delete uh, records from a database or tasks in this case. So first things first, we're going to create uh, a link which basically wraps our button uh, in a uh, React Router DOM link tag, which is going to route us inside our uh, create page that we defined in the app.jsx. So if you remember very well, inside the app.jsx, we defined um, a series of routes. Uh, each route has its own like JSX page that I uh, created inside this pages directory, because every page is gonna have a certain uh, type of data that we, that we want. Now, in our case, our create uh, form is gonna be inside this create page. That's the first step. And inside this uh, link tag, we're gonna add a button tag, button element. And then we're gonna give it some uh, styling. And for our styling, we are going to use the same uh, styles that we use inside our uh, login button. So we can, we can copy it in our to-do list JSX inside this button, we're going to paste it. Now, there's one tiny problem here. Now we're gonna place a new, put a new task inside here. And as you can see, we have one problem here. And and, and it's actually, it's, this is on me actually, because uh, while I was creating, uh, setting up these starter t uh, templates, I wasn't thinking about the design because that wasn't the purpose of this uh, course. That wasn't the end game. The end game was just uh, learning how to use uh, pocket base. But anyway, if we go inside our index CSS, you can see uh, I defined basically like two classes. And the nice thing about Tailwind is that you can apply your uh, these utility classes inside a vanilla CSS class, these uh, our custom CSS class inside a layer. Uh, you can use like these uh, sort of like components essentially, which are just like classes that use uh, other Tailwind classes. Inside this container, uh, we have a text set to 3XL, which base which was basically for uh, the title, because if we go right here, this new task, our title should be of uh, this size. This text should be of this size. The good news is we can overwrite this inside our button by setting the text to uh, base, so it's, so it's equivalent to 16 pixels. Back to the home page, you can see we have this new task just fine. Now, lastly, for this button or uh, link, yeah, button, we want to add an icon from uh, the Google material icons. Now, to do this, you want to go to fonts.google.com slash icons. And then once you're here, you can see, there you go, there's the add button. And you want to make sure you're on the website of things. Let me just zoom in for a second. 
You want to make sure that you're inside this uh, web section and scroll down until you see uh, this band dot class. This is the only uh, the only snippet that you need to be concerned with. So I'm going to copy. And then inside this link, we're going to paste and and we're going to put inside and instead of classroom, give it class name because otherwise React is going to complain saying that this this class class attribute shouldn't be used back inside here. We still need to position it. So yeah, as you can see, we have our, our plus sign, but it's not positioned inside the button. Now I'm going to move this inside uh, the inside the button element. Okay, awesome. We need to position it in the Y direction relative to this text. Okay, now we have this icon inside our application. First, we need to wrap this inside a P tag. Next, we're going to wrap this inside another div so that we can be able to uh, position the icon and the P tag next to each other. So class name, flex, and then margin Y is going to equal to auto. As you can see, we have the we have everything successfully aligned. Now for the span class, I want to uh, give it some margin uh, left. Actually, I now want this plus sign to to be shipped a little bit to uh, the left and also want to add some space here. So first we're going to see margin left is equal to auto. Margin left is two in the opposite direction. For the text, I want to add some margin on the right as well. So margin left is equal to two. All right, as you can see, we, ha we have styled this button right here. If we click here, we have our create task. The next step is to um, create some sort of like form in, uh, for our new task. So this is going to be our new, going to be create task instead. It's going to be an H2, wrap it inside a React fragment. And now um, we're going to have two text, two text boxes. So input type is going to be text. And then there's going to be an on change method. Uh, so we can use later in, inside our text box for our uh, two pieces of state, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But just um, just get rid of this uh, on change and just use the placeholder. Uh, it's going to be title and it's going to be a uh, required one. And we'll, we're going to do all the error handling later. Finally, for the imp, one more final input, placeholder, description. And that is all we need for our uh, create task. If you go here, there's nothing uh, pretty much. And for our class name, we're going to put in uh, to do input, which uh, is the class that we defined inside the CSS file. As you can see, text input actually has a border and then color gray, rounded box content and stuff like that. Text input, copy, paste. As you can see, we have uh, positioned them successfully. But now we want to make the text uh, base. Same thing right here. Now I want to be able to stack them on top of each other. So, so what you can do instead is take this text base, highlight all of this, wrap it inside a div, give it a class name of text base, and then flex. Instead of uh, actually instead of flex, we're going to give this like grid. All right, as you can see, we have uh, we have them stacked on top of each other. I also give them like a gap of four, six actually. All right, awesome. One last thing I'd like to do is mar want a top margin of let's say four, for example. So then we have a little bit of margin on the top right here. For the final element of this page is another link, but this time it's going to send us backwards. So, so two dots means uh, back one page. And then inside, and then we're going to create another button. And inside this button, we're going to have a div right here for our uh, for our span. And then one p tag, which is going to have a class name of text base. So the so 16 uh, pixels of text. 
and it's going to be our save right here. The span tag will be uh, in place of our icon. Use the same uh, set of classes we used for our uh, new task button. Now back inside Google Fonts, make sure it's material symbols by the way. Uh, we want to put in save. Click this floppy disk icon. Copy the snippet. And then paste. Once you do that, you'll have this, which is completely fine because we are going to add a flex. Sorry, we're going to class name flex. All right, and then we have them next to each other. Now, for the icon, I'm going to position this like a little bit to the left, so margin left minus two, and then left two. All right, and then we have them uh, positioned correctly. Margin top is going to be 4. Let's make the 6 instead. Okay, awesome. Now we want two pieces of state for the title and the description. To do this, we are going to go ahead and go right here and then use state empty right here. First up, const title set title equals to use state and uh, it's going to be null for now. Do the same for the description, description set description. All right, this is where the on change uh, method comes in because basically when we press a key on the keyboard, we want this state to change so that once we're done and the user clicks submit, uh, we're uh, this is going to be later used uh, to uh, create to post data to the database. So, e. So I'm going to put an e and then an arrow function. This is essentially going to be an arrow function. And then set title is e dot target dot value. Do the same copy on change, and then paste right here. And then we're going to use set description instead. Now we're going to do a handle submit function. So handle submit. And this handle submit will take in two parameters, which is the title and the description. In this handle submit, we are just going to console log for now to see if everything is working as it should. Console log title and description. In this button right here, we're going to do an on click handle submit. Right click, inspect, console. Clear the terminal, put in some random gibberish right here, save. Okay, so uh, for the handle submit, I actually deleted, uh, actually made a mistake. We were not supposed to pass in any parameters inside the handle submit. So now if we type in here, here, and we get both values, which are the title and the description, and it redirects us back to the home page. But we don't want to always do this. So I'm going to show you right now. Let's go back to our pocket lib, uh, uh, pocket base uh, function. Now we're going to create an export async function, create task, not tasks. It's go, going to take in a title and description. Now back inside our pocket base, click on API preview and then create. And then you have the cons data and you have the uh, post endpoint. Uh, for the REST API, but but we're not going to bother. We just need const. Uh, first, of all, it creates an object, then const record that. All right, so first we're going to create a data object, which takes in the uh, title and, uh, and description as such. And if, now you can uh, omit this second uh, value, but this is important because this is uh, a required value. This is a not empty uh, attribute. Now we're going to put in await uh, client dot collection tax dot create and then pass in our data object. Go back here and then create. Oops. Yeah, create task. It'll automatically import the method method for us and then title and description. 
But before we do so, we want to handle uh, what happens if we don't have a title. We're going to throw uh, an alert right here. So alert, and then please enter a title and basically do nothing after that. So don't go ahead and go back to pick. Don't go back to the home page. So if I click here now, let me just clear this out, close out of here. If we click here uh, and we leave the title empty, it says please enter a title and it still returns us back here. So, all right, it turns out that we don't need this link right here. Uh, we can get rid of them and we can essentially add sort of like a navigate uh, navigate hook. Uh, this is a uh, this is a use navigate hook that is built into React Router. So use navigate and then const navigate equals to use use navigate. Uh, leave it empty. Then a string of two dots right here. So right now uh, we're back inside here. Click save. Hit OK. It does nothing because uh, we're handling this navigation uh, logic inside our handle submit. But in, ca in case there is a title, uh, we are going to call this create task function. Anyway, let's see. Uh, first up, we're going to go ahead and uh, say do homework, do in uh, next Sunday, for example. And we hit save. And now back inside our pocket base, we hit refresh, said do ham work. Uh, I apologize for this typo, but yeah, we have, yeah, anyway, we have this uh, task right task right here inside our, um, inside our list uh, in the front end. And yeah, that is uh, our uh, task creation logic. Next time, next time we're going to dive into how to edit the task and uh, then delete it. And then the part after is uh, the auth. So if you like this video, be sure to uh, subscribe so that you get notified when I upload a new, a new pocket-based video or any new video for that matter. And have a good one.